Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the Sanctuary Christian Center. This is Pastor Sims, and I am teaching today on Lesson 7, and we're going to continue with fasting uh, today. So, uh, and our lesson today is going to be on examples of other individuals in the Bible uh, that actually uh, were examples for us, and so that we can get a better understanding of fasting as well. I am the pastor of the Sanctuary Christian Center. My name is Marco Sims, Pastor Marco Sims. And we also have a prayer line. I want everybody to be informed. Our motto on our prayer line is that we are praying and something is happening. We pray every single day uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time for 30 minutes. And we have been praying for three years now. And we invite you to join us and we're laying the foundation for our church we're three years young and we're believing god for miracles so it's very important for us that we uh stand on the principles of holiness have an understanding of fasting and praying so that we can be strengthened as god's people amen and so i'm going to move forward today and uh we're going to actually uh, be on examples and lessons from other individuals that actually fasted and we know what fasting is all about and, and, and what it does for us. So I want us to be able to consider that. I've been teaching it for the last six weeks now, fasting and praying. I put more emphasis on fasting. And as I close out on this going into the new year, we're going to go into praying as well. But they are, they are marriage. They are combined together. So we have to do both of them. It is imperative that we get this down in our system. Understanding that the difference and examples of other individuals and how it was important for them. Let's start out with Moses. Moses fasted. Moses went up into Mount Sinai to get the tablets, the Ten Commandments from the Father. And it was a holy ground that he was on. So he took his shoes off and he had nothing to eat or drink for 40 days. The Bible says that for 40 days, he did not eat or drink water during this period. It's in Deuteronomy 9 and 9. This is the word of God. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. That's Deuteronomy 9 and 9. So he did that. And then what happened with him is that in his anger as well, because the people had transgressed against the commandments of the Lord in which the Lord had just given him, and he was angry, he took the stones and, 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 and threw the stones down amongst the people, and the people were destroyed. So he had to go back into the mountain and ascend another time again, and he proceeded to fast again. 40 days and nights without food or water. Now, you know that it takes God because our bodies require water uh, after 40 days. We can go for 40 days without water. Uh, uh, really, I think it's 40 days without water, but we've got to be very cautious and you have to be God enlightened and God inspired in order to be able to do what Moses did. Let's go on and let's talk about David. David himself, we know David was a man after God's own heart, but David was an adulteress as well. David uh, took uh, another man's wife and impregnated her. You know, he wanted her for himself. He put this man on the front line in, in wartime, knowing that he would, would be, be killed. And so 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, talks about it in detail. Uh, what really happened there. So I'm just going to highlight a little bit of it and I'm read something starting down at the 13th verse. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord ha also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die, he said, because of what you've done. How be it because by this deed thou hast given great occasions to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Nathan told him that. And no sooner than Nathan could depart from him, the child got sick. And this is what David said. David therefore besought, besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in, lay all night upon the earth, and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he could not. Neither did he eat bread 
with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day. So seven days he fasted. The child died. And after that, he got up, cleaned himself off and went on. He got up after that. He was figuring, my God, because I'm apologetic. Uh, Lord, forgive me. And, and with all sincerity, I believe as well. But that was already ordained by God. Uh, so he refused to eat for seven days, expecting a miracle. So when we're fasting and praying, it's connected. We're connected to the Lord. We're communing with the God. We're fellowshipping just with Jesus and asking God for something or making a commitment on our own behalf. Here we have Elijah, a prophet, a major prophet uh, in the time uh, in First Kings. And uh, he's running from wicked uh, Queen Jezebel. But what I find so amazing from this is that he already had victory over the prophets in uh, a bail on Mark Carmel already, but he's fleeing out of fear. So he, he goes after he leaves the area there from Mount Carmel and he, he's sitting under a juniper tree and just to rest and uh, an angel uh, comes and feeds him. And he's saying to the Lord, Lord, I really want to die. This is what I got out of this. And this is for the people that are trying to commit suicide or you say you want to die. He really didn't want to die, Elijah. My thought is this. If Elijah really wanted to die, he would have stayed right there and Jezebel would have slayed him. But he was running for safety. He's running for cover. He's running and even asking the Lord. That's what a lot of us are doing so often when we're trying to escape what's already ordained for us. We know the destiny, but we're trying to run from it. That is simply amazing because you can't run and you just can't hide from God. So he's sitting on a juniper tree and the angel comes and, and feeds him and gives him food. And, and after that, he feeds him again. And, and then he, he, he's preparing him. Elijah is going now on a journey. On this journey, uh, until he arrives at, at, at Mount Horeb, which was really renamed after Moses had already been there because the, the former name of it was Mount Sinai. He had been there. So he's going on this journey. And for 40 days, the Lord had prepared him for, for this journey. He had no food, no drink, no nothing for this for, for the, at all. 40 days, really no food. It didn't say no water. The Bible didn't say that. This is the word of God out of 1 Kings 19 and uh, verse 7 and 8. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him, and did eat, because the journey is too great for thee, and arose and did eat and drink, and went in, in the strength of uh, that meat 40 days and 40 nights until Horeb, the mount of, of, of God. Uh, so he fasted for 40 days. Again, another fasting, uh, out seeking the Lord. Uh, we're seeking the Lord. And when we're doing these things, when we commit our, our bodies, which is the temple of the Lord our God, we are committing ourselves. Then we have Ezra. Ezra fast while the morning over sin. Uh, the Jews had just returned to Israel from Babylonian captivity. Uh, 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 yet they had disobeyed God oh, during their captivity. It's amazing how God would constantly de deliver them. And Ezra gathered the people together to confront them for their sins. And, and, and Ezra said over in Ezra 10 and 6, he said, Then Ezra rose up before the house of God and went into the chamber of Johanan, the son of Elisip. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. Because they had been carried away, he mourned. And so his his um, fasting was one of mourning, being before the Lord and crying out for the people. And I'm quite sure at this time he was probably saying himself, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on your people. The word continues to say in verse 8, and that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance would be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered together themselves unto Jerusalem within three days. Three days they fasted. Three days they fasted. Again, another fast while he was mourning for the people uh, in, in regard to them sinning against God. A chosen people uh, 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 going against the will of God. Absolutely amazing. Now we have Esther. 
Esther fasted for the safety of the Jews because they would have been taken out. And, and we have Haman who just did not like Mordecai or his family or his lineage. He would have taken out the total Jewish lineage. This is what the word of the Lord says over in Esther 1 and 1. It says, now it came to pass in the days of Azarus. This is Azarus, which reigned from India even into Ethiopia. What a massive amount of land. Over 170 and 20 provinces. Ah, ah. The reason for this genocide was because of one man. He would have wanted him to take him out. So we read the word of God and we say that, that Esther was chosen for such a time as this. A time as this to save the Jewish nation. Ezra could, Esther couldn't go before the king without an invitation, but she went in the strength and in her power and her might. But a fast was called out for the people first. Oh, my God. A fast was called out before the people and the people gathered themselves together for three days. The Bible says it for three days. It says, and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day night or day that she would be able to go before the king and tell him of Haman's plot against her people. What I found so interesting about this too is that she never communicated that she was a Jew. That helps me to understand that the Bible says all things are lawful but not expedient. But as a people of God, we feel that we need to share everything in our lives that's going on with us or a family member, when someone else tells you something, you feel it may be impressed upon you to share with somebody else what's happening in your life. That, that's not the case all the time. She never exposed herself. Some things we ought to keep to ourselves and you need not tell anybody all the time everything that's going on with you. Uh, you we, we expose ourselves. And thank God that she had the wisdom of God and also Mordecai being in her life that she did not expose herself. If she had been exposed, then the entire Jewish nation probably would, would have been wiped out. We've got to have wisdom, people of God. We've got to use wisdom and we've got to learn to close our mouths. That is so very important for us. Now we have Darius. Darius was the king of the, uh, in the Babylonian uh, nation. And we have a Daniel in this area too. Now the people were plotting against Daniel. Daniel had risen above and, and now we have another king, the second king that he's under because the first one was Nebuchadnezzar. And then we have Darius who comes into reign at this time. So they, they put an edict out in the land. And the edict in the land was that no one would, would be able to pray at all unless they were praying to their gods. They knew that Daniel was committed to praying. You've got to know that the enemy knows who you are. He knows who we are. So he comes against us, especially when we're standing in the power of God. You've got to know that we can only stand in the strength of God. So we've got to prepare ourselves for the war is on. It's right now, it's happening consistently. He's forever trying to snipe us out or to take a loved one out. So we've got to be on our post and on our positions. So here we have Darius himself, the king who says he really didn't want to pass that edict, but somehow he agreed with the administrators at that time. So they signed a law and he had to sign it and everybody had to adhere to it. This is the word of God over in Daniel, the sixth chapter. I'm starting at the seventh verse. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal salute, statue, I'm sorry, and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king established the decree and signed it in writing, and he did. But this is what Darius did. Down in the 18th verse, Darius did not want him to be thrown into the den. But when he was thrown in the den, this is someone who didn't even serve the God of Daniel. But people don't have to serve the God that we serve, but they've got to see the God in us. We've got to walk in the power of God, and then they will be willing to accept it. So this is what King Darius did. The, the sixth chapter, the 18th verse says, Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. 
neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. He didn't even play music for that night. He fasted from eating and music. There was something that was consistent, I would assume, in his life, the music as well. But he neglected, he says, I won't even have that because I'm going to fast on behalf of Daniel. That's somebody believing in the God that we serve, Jesus. Ooh, so the next day he arose up and he went out to see what happened to, to Daniel. Oh, my Lord. And the king was relieved to find that Daniel survived the night. What a blessing that the word of God says over in the 25th to the 28th verse and Daniel, the sixth chapter says, then King Darius uh, wrote unto all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree now because he's got the power to do that, that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even until the end. Oh, my God, my God, uh, a God that he didn't serve because they served multiple gods at that time under the Babylonian nation. But he's saying, hey, I want you to know that Daniel's God is the God of all gods. People, the Bible says to us, I will make your enemy your footstool. We've got to know that. I will make your enemy your footstool. Yes, God. Yes, God. Uh, anyone in my background, it's on my prayer line. If you would kindly mute your lines for me, please. Uh, my God, I will make your enemy your footstool. So then we have King Darius uh, 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 fasting on his behalf. Uh, 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 Daniel fasted. And this is where we are approaching in the beginning of the year for three weeks, Daniel fasted. Daniel fasted and prayed to understand of a vision that the Lord would give him in Daniel 10. He did. For three weeks, uh, Daniel uh, abstained from uh, uh, bread, from meats and wine. So he took on just vegetables and fruits. So we do the same thing. We've adopted that philosophy with a purpose in mind. So people of God, let's do this intentional. At the top of the year, not just another fast. Once again, 2017, 17 represents the year of complete victory. Everything that we desire, whoo. Every will that the Lord has for us in our lives, every petition that we've laid out for God, let's trust him for it. But we've got to go in. We've got to do something. You've got to do something different that we've never done before. Uh, da Daniel was mourning for three weeks as he went out before the Lord. Uh, and, and it goes on and it gives much more detail about what transpired in the 10th the chapter in Daniel. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read all of that uh, for the sake that it's, it's, it's lengthy. But he went before the Lord and he waited to hear from the Lord uh, during that time. Let's look at Jesus, our king. Jesus fasted uh, before a temptation by uh, Satan. He fasted before that time. Before Jesus was tempted by Satan, uh, 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 he started his public ministry. He fasted 40 days. Immediately when he came off the fast, guess who confronted him? The enemy. Just when we say yes to the will of the Lord, anybody with me, anybody on here that's with me and know what I'm talking about that can attest to this, Immediately when we say yes to the will of the Lord, the enemy is on our heels. If anybody's with me, please say yes to me now. And let me know that you're there. Uh, he's on our heels, but he has no victory. We have to stand steadfast in the Lord our God and trust God like never before. We've got to trust him and believe God for miracles. Believe God for the miracles in our lives. Matthew speaks about in Matthew 4 and 1. It says, beginning, and I'm reading a little bit of it. And it says, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command thou these stones to be 
made bread. Oh, he says that man cannot live alone, but, but by every word that proceeded out of the, the mouth of God. Uh, oh, so we can't just live by the bread alone, which is substance for our body, but we live from the, the word of God that we live, breathe at in every single day, saying yes to the will of God. That's where we're at. It's so important for us. Temptation will come. We've got to know that it is inevitable that temptation will come. Yes, it will. Here we have Paul. Paul fa fa fasted. Uh, Paul himself, whose name was Saul, a man who persecuted the Christians. Uh, he had gotten permission from the Jewish leadership to go to Damascus and to arrest anyone who denied any allegiance to Christ. But on that road, there was a time for conversion. You all, we've all had a Damascus experience. Yes, God. Woo, my God. We've all had that experience that has changed our lives for the better. Yes, God. And so we have him here. And then he had the encounter. And the Bible says in Acts 9 and 9, it says, and he was three days without sight and neither did he eat nor drink. That's what the Bible says. He didn't eat nor drink because he had an encounter with God. It is something to this uh, fasting. We don't fast because we, we want to fast. We fast because it is the will of God that we should do this. We are strengthened. In this body dwells no good thing. But in order for me to align my mind up to, to, to minister to my body and to tell it, you, you do as I say do, I've got to be connected with Jesus. That means that we've got to be surrendering ourselves. We need to be doing that, surrendering ourselves. So I want to close out with this, giving some reasons why we fast and we should fast. One I've given you already after I've given us the examples of, uh, of individuals that have already fasted. Fasted. Reasons why we fast and should fast because Christ expects it of us. It is an expectation from Jesus that we fast. An expectation, he says that in Matthew 6, 16 through 18. It's a commandment for us. He says, and when you fast, not if you fast, not you should, when we fast. We are to do these things as he was having a conversation with the Pharisees, not to just go about boasting about it in any shape, form or fashion. Get up, wash your face, get yourself together. We don't need to talk about it all the time. Anoint your head with oil and move on out in the power and the might of God. Keep moving forward and praying and trusting God and the strength of God and a fresh anointing will fall on God's people. We fast for guidance as these other individuals did as Moses went up to Mount Mariah, as David did, and other individuals went out for, for guidance. The judges fasted for guidance. Elders in the church fasted. They fasted before they sent other individuals out. Yes. Yes, before they sent the individuals out, they fasted and trusted God. That helps me to know, church, church, every program that we have, we put a seal of approval on it with fasting and praying. Oh, what I'm doing and for God's ministry, this is God's church. I'd say to the Lord, this is your church. This is your ministry, God. I am just a facilitator and I'm ordained by God to move in the direction that you've led me. So I, it's all God, but I'm fasting and I'm praying and I'm trusting God for guidance like never before. So we're trusting him for intensity in our prayer life. Our prayer life becomes more intense when we uh, surrender ourselves. Think of what Darius did. He did not, uh, King Darius, he didn't just fast from food. He fasted from music. That helps the, me to know that, that some things ought to be exempt out of our lives. So we've got to make those decisions for ourselves. I'm not here to tell you that, but those things that we love the most, some folk need to come off Facebook. Some of us need to come out of television. Some of us need to cut the music out. Some of us need to stop talking so much, my Lord Jesus, and praying more than ever before. We're looking for breakthroughs, but we're not willing to do the work. There's work that has to be done for a breakthrough. I need a miracle in my life. I don't know about you. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. And I'm telling God, I need a miracle. But he's saying to me, what are you willing to do to get that that I've already got for you? 
there's some work for us to do. Intensity in prayer as a sign of mourning. Look at David when David mourned before the Lord. Um, Nehemiah when he mourned before the Lord, and and uh, uh, Nehemiah had a mind to build uh, uh, the temple before the Lord, and and he called an assembly of the people together. A sign of mourning. Uh, the Bible says in Nehemiah 1, 4 through 6, and it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keep it covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments my god we got to be attentive to the, the the commandments of jesus our lord uh, being obedient he says but i'm gonna fast and i'm gonna pray i'm gonna surrender oh we're entering into 2017 but sacrifices have to be made we offer up a sacrifice of praise before the lord our god to show humility in the presence of god this is why the lord god God honored and loved David. David was a man of humility. In all his wrong, that could not be right. And the things that we do today, if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, in due season, he shall raise us up. We've got to keep focus. No, we're not perfect. You may say the wrong thing to your child. Be apologetic. Oh, some folk curse. Let's put it out there. We've done it. We've said some wrongful things. Be, be humble enough to be apologetic about it. You've done wrong in your marriage or something else may have gone wrong or you said something wrong at work be apologetic and be sincere about it and in due season the lord will raise you up we got to trust god like never before and we uh do fasting we enter into fasting for worship fasting without the right attitude does not touch the heart of god oh as i as i as i read a little bit of Psalm 51, as we, 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 we talk about worship and what it means to fast and going into worship. I'm not asking God for anything. I'm just telling the Lord how great and mighty my, my God is, how excellent is the, the name of Jesus. Oh, how wonderful it is that you would take time out to save my soul. And this is Psalm 51 as we go right into prayer and truly close out this evening. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Yes, Lord. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The, uh, restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy, thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from the blood guiltiness, O oh God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O oh Lord, Ye, open thy lips and thy mouth shall show forth thy praise. We want to praise him. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are of a broken spirit, of a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, that thou would not despise. Break us, God, that you would make us all over again. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, which burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Oh, God, we bless you today.
And we honor you. We thank you, God, for the example set before us. Hebrew talks about the individuals that have gone before Moses, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, those individuals, Joseph, that have gone before us, that have been examples for before us. Help us, God, that we can be examples before the Lord. It isn't enough that they did it way back when and we're doing nothing now. Bless the works of our hands, God, that we would be mighty soldiers in the army of the Lord, ambassadors for you. Strengthen us where we can. With humility, we ask for forgiveness. With humility, we ask, God, that you would lead us and guide us. Let us be called as servants, just as David, as men after, and women, men generically speaking, after your own heart. Guide us, God, where we're lost at. Restore us, God. Build us up where we're weaken. That the strength of God, after we come off fast, after we've already prayed, and the new anointing would rest upon us, let us take the mantle up and run in the power and the strength of God. Woo, God, we bless you. We honor you and we thank you for your strength and we say yes to the will of God. Let it be so, God. Let it be done in Jesus' name. I pray that you are encouraged by this word. I had to stop and pull by the wayside because it is important to me that I am consistent and committed to giving a word weekly, as I have already stated, because somebody needs it. And I know it does my heart good as well. So be encouraged, people of God. Remember that we are praying and something is happening. We've shifted in the spiritual realm. It's not going to happen. You've got to walk in it and trust God for it. We're here every day praying. The prayer line number is 641-715-3670. And the participant code is 688800. Go to our church website to read a little bit more about us, which is sanctuarycc.com. See our upcoming events. We're planned out quite a bit. We try to do that and make sure that you would be informed and be enlightened. Be encouraged, everybody. Christmas is up and coming. It is isn't about the gifts. It's about the love of God and the light that's shining down within you. Don't stay at home. Go out and celebrate Jesus on Sunday. Yes. And if you have no place to go, come and worship with us. We are currently located at the Courtyard Marriott, 1337 Old Covington Highway in Conyers, Georgia. And we start service promptly at 10 a.m. Be blessed, everybody. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Be encouraged, everybody. God bless you until next week.